Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Ben Sessions. I'm the Laboratory Director of Reproductive Care Center in Sandy, Utah. Um, I am an embryologist by trade as well. I've been with Reproductive Care Center since 2014. I've been a laboratory director since 2019. Um, I was uh, a professor at Utah State University before I made a jump in career and joined the human IVF field. Um, I, I dealt a lot with animal nuclear transfer, so I had a lot of experience with mammalian embryos, um, but I thought uh, my knowledge and my experience could be of great use uh, to those struggling with infertility, and so I, I made the jump, and it's been a great decision. Um, and so I'd like to take some time today to explain embryo grading uh, to those who are going through the IVF uh, treatment, so you have a better understanding of the reports you receive from the embryologist or even clinical staff and help you know, expand your understanding and, and hopefully make reports a little easier to digest. The first report for grading you'd be getting would be on day three. Um, at that stage, the embryos are very dynamic. We're expecting to see about eight to 10 cells, and uh, you would usually have quite a few cells there um, at that time, or I guess um, quite a few embryos to look at at that time. Uh, but the other thing is, with the, unfortunately with IVF, is that there is some loss from step to step. Um, we usually don't retrieve as many eggs as we're expecting. Not all of them fertilize. Uh, not all of them start developing. And so I, as we do the day three report, um, no, it's a great snapshot of what's going on, uh, but it, it's not the final report or final story when it's coming to the, the end goal of, of helping you have children. Um, with the day three embryos, uh, like I said, now we're eight to 10 cells that we're looking for. Hopefully the blastomeres are, are uniform in size uh, and, and there's limited fragmentation. Sometimes when, when the embryos divide, not all of the cellular contents from those blastomeres are included in the newly formed daughter cells. And so there's some fragmentation and that's left. But we do get grades of good, fair, and poor. Uh, and it does vary uh, greatly from patient to patient. So uh, sometimes the grades are patient specific. Uh, we, we have moved away from day three embryo transfers just because there are still a lot of developmental uh, hurdles that an embryo has to overcome when it's developing and growing from day three to day five. Uh, but day three is a good idea um, to check them. It gives us a good snapshot of what's going on. Um, and we can give the grades a, a good fair report at that time based on the number of blastomeres, uh, how uniform they are in size, and whether there's fragmentation or, or other abnormalities that we, we typically don't see. But as it's going from you know, day three to day five in culture, uh, there, there's a huge transition that occurs in an embryo's development. Um, up until day three, it's all of the DNA, RNA, protein that existed in the egg at the time of fertilization has been controlling development. It's at that day three stage when the, the zygotic genome activation occurs, which is a big word. Um, but what happens at that point is the DNA in the newly formed embryo then starts uh, controlling development. So that's when the, the contribution or the DNA contributed from the sperm and the egg that's joined to form that new embryo that it starts to control development. And so now that, that is a big hurdle uh, that embryos have to overcome. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's imperfect. And so uh, even if you have a, a lot of good embryos on day three, there, there are some of them and that will not further develop and unfortunately do arrest in development. Uh, the nice thing, though, that we have about going to day five culture is it also allows the embryos to self-select. And like I said, now there's a developmental um, hurdle they've got to overcome. If we let them go in culture to day five, that allows us to then let the embryos select themselves out. Those that um, won't further develop do stop, and, and we can know that they weren't viable uh, two days later. Uh, at day five, you know, there's a lot more cells in the embryo. Uh, you're looking at 75 to 100 cells. And at the time, uh, we, we do assign them grades. It's a modified Gardner grading system, which is common in, in the IVF field. And, and what that involves is giving a grade to the embryo based on ex its expansion status, and then we assign two letter grades. The first letter grade is for the inner cell mass, which is the, the group of cells that uh, develops into the fetus. And then the outer layer, the trophectoderm layer, also receives a, a letter grade, and that's what contributes to the placenta or extra embryonic membranes. Uh, so on, on day five, you know, we're, we're hoping to see some fully expanded, even hatching blastocysts. And so our, our number grade is from one to six. Um, Expansion grades one and two are early blastocysts, where the, the cavity inside the embryo is just starting to fill with the fluid. Um, from expansion grade three to four, you're getting a fully expanded blastocyl cavity. With the expansion grade four, you actually start to see a thinning of the zona pellucida. 
And then for expansion grade five is when the, the cells of the embryo actually herniate or burst through the zona pellucida and they're hatching out of that shell. And then uh, expansion grade six is a fully hatched blastocyst, so it's completely shed uh, the zona pellucida. With the two letter grades we are assigning, it's either A, B, or C. Um, for the inner cell mass, what we're looking for is a tight, uh, cohesive unit of cells, no well organized and, and compact. And that would be your A grade. Uh, a B grade would be you no know, less organized, not as many cells. Um, and then a C grade would be a very you know, small cell number, poorly organized. And so um, we would assign that as A, B, or C. And then for the trifecta, it's kind of a similar grading system. Um, for the A grade, we're looking for a, a tightly knit, uh, cohesive group of cells uh, on the outside. Um, we want to be uniform in size and for them to, to be a large in number. For B, is they're not as well organized. There's not as many cells. There might be some larger cells there um, in the trophectoderm layer. And then with the C grade, is there's, there's few cells there. Uh, and, and they're larger in size and, and not very uniform. And so overall, you know, we, we have those, that grade for expansion grade, which is a number, and then the two letter grades um, for the inner cell mass and the trophectoderm. We also assign an overall letter grade for those embryos. Uh, if they have either an A or B grade in the trophectoderm or the inner cell mass, we assign a good grade to them. If they have a one C grade, either the ICM or the trophectoderm, then they are assigned an overall fair grade. And then if they have two Cs, um, then they are uh, given a poor quality grade. Uh, for our policy here at Reproductive Care Center, uh, we, we do not freeze uh, poor quality embryos. Um, we don't see that they survive the freeze thaw process very well. Um, and so we do not utilize those embryos. Uh, but anything of a good or fair quality grade, uh, we, we do utilize whether for a fresh embryo transfer uh, for crowd preservation or freezing or even um, pre-implantation genetic testing uh, for us to do the biopsy procedure on. Uh, but we we do see good results with, with good and fair quality embryos. I'd like to remind people that fair quality embryos still make beautiful babies. And, and it just gives us a chance to rank them based on morphology or how they look. And obviously we want to give you the best chance of success. And so we will transfer the, the best looking or the, the highest quality embryos first and then freeze the remainders. Typically, the majority of our patients do have extra embryos to freeze um, after the fresh embryo transfer. And so, you know, it, it's great that we've had advances in the technology that we're able to uh, freeze embryos with high success and have them survive the thaw with high success. And uh, we're, we're talking 97, 98% uh, survival rate with the freeze thaw process. Uh, hopefully, you know, this, this uh, summary of the embryo grading procedure will help you understand uh, the reports that you will be seeing as you go through treatment. Uh, one question we have received is, what do patients do with embryos remaining uh, following treatment or once they've completed their families? Uh, this is a very personal decision and it varies from patient to patient. Uh, but I will discuss some of the uh, some of the outcomes of what people do with uh, their extra embryos. Uh, one is that they choose to uh, discard the embryos. Uh, we, we do have consents that we send to you and sign to get your permission to do that. Uh, but we do take the embryos out and, and, and do uh, dispose of them or, or discard of them in a, a biohazard. And so then we you know, document all of the procedures that we've done to make sure that uh, we, we've done everything correctly. Uh, another option is that some patients prefer that we release the embryos to them for disposal or, or, or discard or for uh, whatever they want to uh, do with those embryos. Um, again, there's a separate consent that we will sign or send to you for you for you to sign, and it would then we would set up a time to allow for you to come to the clinic, and we will hand off the embryos to you in the straws or on the device that they're frozen, and then uh, you can take them home and and and, and do what uh, you feel best with with those embryos. Uh, another option that that is becoming increasingly more popular is to donate the embryos to other patients. Um, there, there are known embryo donors, and so if you know a couple that's struggling with infertility and, and you would like to give your embryos to them to give them the opportunity to have uh, a children and, and to complete their family, we can do that. Um, we also have an, an anonymous uh, donor pool or embryo donation program so that you can donate your embryos to a reproductive care center where they will be um, given to some intended parents anonymously and so that they are then able to uh, create their families and, and, and build their families with those donated embryos. Another question we received is how long do frozen embryos last? 
And really, in theory, as long as there's liquid nitrogen in that tank, those embryos remain viable. Um, we, we do have redundant alarms um, set up on our, our, our tanks, and uh, we, we, we want to make sure that we always have liquid nitrogen in those tanks. And so, um, yeah, no, as long as there is nitrogen in those tanks, the embryos are viable. I think it was just recently some a publication put out where a, a child was born from embryos that were frozen 30 years ago. And so, you know, it's it's, it's remarkable that you know, we, we can hold up one of those embryos in that um, you no know, state for that extended period of time. But uh, fortunately, there have been advances in the technology, and we're able to a lot of those embryos that have been frozen for a long time and, and have a high success rate with those. Another question that's been asked of us is what is the difference between a day three embryo and a blastocyst? Uh, so blastocysts typically see day five, day six, and has many, many more cells. Uh, a day three embryo is uh, eight to 12 cells, uh, or eight to 12 blastomeres, and a, a blastocyst has you know, 75 to 100 cells and, and is a lot, much larger in, in size as well as a, a day three embryo. I talked about you know how it's an imperfect science, um, and you no. Know, and we, we try our best. We've got excellent culture conditions. Um, we have excellent, excellent you know, embryologists that are, are well-trained um, that take fantastic care of your embryos. Um, you know, the, the hardest thing that we face as embryologists is, is when we have a, a bad outcome or bad development. Um, those are the, the more challenging phone calls that we have to make when we we'll call a patient to say that there's nothing to freeze um, or, or nothing to biopsy. Uh, unfortunately, it, it is an imperfect science. Um, you know that we we don't retrieve all the eggs that we expect. Not all of them fertilize. Not all of them start developing. Not all of them make the blastocyst stage. Um, but I, I want to give you peace of mind to let you know that we do everything we possibly can to give your embryos a, the greatest chance of survival, um, the greatest chance of, of, of being a successful cycle for you. Um, but you no, know, unfortunately, this is an imperfect science. Um, but no, we do do our part to give them the best chance to reach the blastocyst stage and, and to be utilized or, or used for an embryo transfer for genetic testing or, or for cryopreservation. Well, thank you everyone for watching this video. Uh, we, did, we did this video uh, in celebration of National Infertility Awareness Week. Uh, hopefully it was informational for you. Um, and no, we, we appreciate the time that you took to watch this. If you do have any questions, uh, please post a comment. Uh, below our question below in the comment section and, and we will get back with you um, and uh, i just want to let you know that no we are on your side we are an integral part of your team and we will do whatever we can to, to help you reach your your family goals um, you know, the clinical staff the building staff the receptionist the, the physicians and the, and the lab staff you know we're, we're all there to help you ensure success and we'll do everything we can um, to communicate well with you and, and to help you along this infertility journey of yours and, and hope and pray that in the end we can help you, you know, build the family that you desire and, and, and do everything we can to make this a success for you. And thanks again for watching this video.